So, I mean, after watching this film, I think they tried. They didn't do a great job. They yeah. lost it. They lost it. I voted it on about... someone else doing it. Huh? I voted on someone else making a film like this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, 100%. I think, like, this was a missed opportunity that, like, if you're going to make a fracking horror film, I think that does need to exist. I think there, that's a subject that people need to learn about, but that this film did not do that justice. And that hopefully someone else will make one um, because fracking is kind of bad. Yeah, uh, and have which, a scientist on set. <laughs> yeah, like teach you about it, or like also hold you accountable. Yeah, because like y'all we'll just be, completely uh, forgot the plot at the end. Let's just do it for kicks. Ugh. Yeah, do it for funsies. Uh, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that film was frustrating. But let's talk about like what it was about. What was all the fuss about? Uh, I'll define fracking for you. Um, in an article from BBC news titled, what is fracking and why is it controversial? It defines fracking as the process of drilling down into the earth before, before a high pressure water mixture is directed at the rock to release the gas inside water, sand, and chemicals are injected into the rock at high pressure which allows the gas to flow out of the head of the well the process can be carried out vertically or more commonly by drilling horizontally into the rock layer which can create new pathways to release gas or used to extend the existing channels the term fracking refers to how rock is fractured apart by a high pressure mixture my favorite part of that quote is that chemicals um and that's like a big problem so i'm going to talk about that a lot um fracking and its methods are claimed to not inherently be damaging in its process i read a lot of stuff for this like more than i expected to to the point where i'm like gabe i'm so sorry there are more sources in there i don't even <laughs> know if i'm going to quote them but i've i've read parts of all of them and it's just it's all necessary it all needs to be in there because they need to learn about the stuff um but yeah the problem I keep interacting with is this classification, like something that I've like been really frustrated with within this series is like the classification of something as dangerous, but only as it impacts humanity specifically um, mm -hmm. and not how it impacts like other things like animals, uh, our ecosystem, our literal planet that we need to survive and live like we don't get a planet B. Um, that like the only re the only way something is classified as dangerous or needing to change as if it's something that specifically is like humans are in trouble from this um and it doesn't in, in like even reference the impact that it has on biodiversity local plant life and animal life uh and i think an additional piece of this is recognizing that hydraulic fracking is just another method of pulling fossil fuels which is something that we need to step away from in the first place um mm -hmm. it's not a route that should be taken by a government that claims to care about the environment and it has it's like a big thing it's that they've just signed off on a bunch of new fossil fuel time it wasn't new it was in 2021 so it's 2022 now um but like it was recent enough um and their whole thing is it's only we... january it's only february it's that was recent yeah, it was recent <laughs> uh and they were like we need to take care of the planet haha <laughs> like for funsies like not for real though um kind of like this film um <laughs> yeah. and essentially like the whole thing is that they are inherently like doubling down on the fact that we need to be using fossil fuels when we already know that fossil fuels are damaging for the environment something that we already have the science behind it's already there um so the arguments for fracking with that in mind is essentially a moot point. The fracking immediately can be seen as negatively impactful because it is extracting fossil fuels that are a non-sustainable energy resource that we shouldn't even be pursuing anymore and instead should shift to clean energy that will reduce our carbon footprint so we don't die in seven years. Um, but let's impact the uh, environmental impact a little bit more. Um, while human water systems are like unlikely to be affected by each fracking situation um water and animal and plant life are um a very frustrating piece of the data collection for fracking is the tracking of the impact uh specifically because of non-disclosure agreements there is so much that we don't have access to because of these agreements that states have made with these companies to say that they don't need to tell us what's in the process of fracking what's they don't need the to tell us what's in the chemicals that are put into the ground to break the rocks apart. Um, and that's been something that's really been 
inherently frustrating and damaging to the research to figure out if it's actually damaging to the planet mm-hmm. because we don't have the information necessary to conduct the necessary science. Um, we have a lot of things that imply that it does, uh, but because we don't know exactly what chemicals are in the fracking fluid, the companies have made it impossible to track the impact. Uh, and it feels very intentional if you look at anything critically ever. Um, but there are studies concluded by Cornell that suggest that the interaction between wildlife and fracking chemicals resulted in many animal deaths. So the article titled, Study Suggest Hydrofracking is Killing Farm Animals, Pets, by Krishna Ramanujan outlines exactly how many animals were impacted in their specific study. This study is also referenced in another article that I read on One Green Planet. Um, The new report has found dozens of cases of illness, death, and reproductive issues in cows, horses, goats, llamas, chickens, dogs, cats, fish, and other wildlife, uh, and humans. According to the study, in New Solutions, a journal of environmental and occupational health policy, making a direct link between the death and illness is not possible due to incomplete testing, proprietary secrecy from gas drilling companies regarding the chemicals used in hydraulic fracking, and non-disclosure agreements that seal testimony and evidence when lawsuits are settled. Uh, the data because of this makes it nearly impossible to explicitly state that fracking was the cause of the animal deaths, but the implication is pretty clear in there. Uh, the study goes on to reference in Louisiana, 17 cows died within an hour of direct exposure to hydraulic fracking fluid. A necropsy report listed respiratory failure and circulatory collapse as the most likely cause of death. In another instance, a farmer that separated his herd of cows into two groups, 60 were in a pasture with a creek where hydraulic hydrofracking wastewater was allegedly dumped, 36 were in separate fields without creek access. Of the 60 cows exposed to the creek water, 21 died, 16 failed to produce calves the following spring, and none of the 36 cows separated fields had in the other field that didn't have access to the hydrofracking water had any health problems though one cow failed to breed in the spring. The data gets even more upsetting as another farmer reported that 140 of his cows were exposed to hydrofracking fluid when wastewater impoundment was allegedly slit and the fluid drained into the pasture in a pond. Of the 140 cows, about 70 died, and there were high incidences of stillborn or stunted calves. Whether we know what is in the fracking chemicals or not, I think it seems like the results are somewhat clear. When fracking chemicals are introduced into water systems, those chemicals cause deaths, health problems, and other issues. Uh, what was very frustrating about this is the manipulation of the data points specifically and not allowing transparency for what is in the fracking chemicals. Um, non-disclosure agreements should not be allowed when public health is at stake um, and shouldn't be necessary if these chemicals aren't dangerous. Um, this also extends to the potential impact on humans since there seems to be the main, that seems to be the main focus of a lot of the studies. Um, it's noted in the paper that animals exposed to the chemicals were not tested prior to slaughter and the possible implications of how this could impact meat and dairy products as well. Mm. Ultimately, the real damage can't be measured if there isn't transparency for what is being put into the fracking fluid itself. Um, it's like children of men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I feel like there's going to be lots of damages that we're going to link back to this and be like, how did we let this happen? And mm-hmm. it's not going to matter because we'll be dead in seven years. But you know what I mean? Like, if we're not, <laughs> yeah. if we're still here and we did it, we achieved what we were, we're trying gonna to do. Sad about it. We're going to be sad about this because it's just another thing on the list of things that this government has done that's horrendous and very upsetting and results in millions of deaths of humans. Um, but There's other ways in which fracking can damage the local ecosystems, and there are many things that influence this, both in terms of noise pollution, potential water contamination, general pollution from improper waste disposal, kind of just like air pollution that comes from like drilling into the ground and like the dust that it upheaves, um, Mm -hmm. as well as uh, the risks associated with drilling itself and how it influences potential earth tremors. So like you were saying, Gabe, it was like seeing them destroy the earth, like the rock. It was scary because it's making the earth shake. And when the earth shake, it's generally mad. So upsetting. What seems to be the most concerning part of fracking is the damage it could do without the proper regulations. Like there's the inherent damage that is already taking place. But then in addition to this, the potential damage that could just happen from someone having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And and the fact that this is just like a band-aid that is placed on our current fossil fuel problem and thus negatively contributes to climate change. While there are countless claims that fracking isn't dangerous or damaging if done correctly, the potential damages through carelessness or unethical labor practices could and likely will lead to contamination of somebody's water systems. The information surrounding fracking seems to hinge on the success of hydraulic drilling and that if done correctly, there's no risk to these environments or the people who live there. However, the risk associated with the mistakes that can happen on the on site are dangerous for the environment and dangerous for the people who live near these sites. Um, on a bad day, mistakes in fracking fracking could contaminate the water supplies for local wells. The process also doesn't take into account the disastrous infrastructure of our country. The assumption going in is that the other necessary protections are in place, that local wells and communities are made well, that the cement is solid and without cracks, that there have been updates to said infrastructure that makes it sound and mm -hmm. not like prone to having gas enter it and then explode and the wells uh like the whole thing is that there's this assumption that our infrastructure isn't entirely just like destroyed when that's uh we have not updated our infrastructure for this country in a very long time uh and it's going to cause problems specifically when it comes to fracking because it, apparently it already has um there's unfortunately a case in dimlock pa that is a little murky. Uh, it seems like there is debate over what exactly actually happened, but in an article titled Dimlock PA Ground Zero in the Fight Over Fracking, there is a well-documented incident of Cabot oil and gas that they decided to foot the bill on a kind of big situation. The article states that right around the time that Cabot Oil and Gas began drilling natural gas wells in the community, several re residents began experiencing several pro severe problems with their water supplies. The most high-profile event happened on January 1st, 2009, when Norma Fiorentino's backyard water well blew up. Jeez. Um, the Cabot Oil and Gas Company accepted the charges associated with this, although it seems that they didn't directly cause the issue uh, and that it was actually infrastructure problems, like I was saying, that compounded with the fracking to cause the explosion. There's also some uncertainty surrounding if fracking actually did anything in addition to just the infrastructure problems, but either way, Cabot Oil and Gas did accept the charges laid out against them. And in another article titled, Is Fracking a Threat to Water Supplies by Robert Grabier, uh, they provide a bit more context. There is a well-documented case of improperly cemented well contamination, contaminating water in Dimlock, Pennsylvania. In 2010, gas driller Cabot Oil and Gas, COG, was cited by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection for contaminating water wells in the Marcellus Shale drilling operations. Last year, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro announced 15 criminal counts against Cabot, including nine felonies upon the recommendation of a grand jury. The company was charged with violating the state's clean streams law. While it was later explained that the cause was due to the improperly cemented gas wells, uh, and that gas is something that naturally does occur underground uh, and could have caused the explosion. There is a lot of controversy around this case. And I think like the fact that they were like, yeah, it was us, I guess, kind of speaks it for shows itself. That it's possible. To yeah, be exactly. So like while there's controversy around this, I think it's very evident that it's very also very possible that it was their fault. Uh, and that they have funds there waiting. Yeah, the, the, there's just act like there's there's scapegoats and funds available for situations like that. And that the result is that like fracking is still happening. They're still signing deals for that pipelines, other things that are inherently damaging to the earth. So ultimately, though, fracking shouldn't even be happening because we shouldn't be venturing into that realm because we should be venturing into more sustainable fuel sources instead of trying to lower gas prices we should be replacing them and removing the need for gas um, a task that's pretty challenging when the fossil fuel industry has the largest delegation of this at the cop 26 climate summit uh, fossil fuels are something that america has doubled down on i wonder why um, and it's so frustrating to say the least uh, and we'll get to into this further in our episode on Don't Look Up but please, please, please check out our Ways to Help section for these episodes there are things you can do to support the people who are doing the work on the ground and I go more in depth on this in our Don't Look Up episode and hopefully we'll continue to talk about these things uh, shout out to Fridays for Future 
that on March 25th, there will be a global s climate strike taking place, calling for action to be made in the fight against climate change and the injustice surrounding like what the rich people are doing to this country as well as the government. Um, they have a lot of information on their website and I recommend checking it out, but essentially like, don't be passive on this. We are running out of time. There is only so much time left. Uh, you'll see it in our next episode where we talk about like literally the timeline for everything that's going on. It's a short list. It's not six months, but it's soon. It's seven years. So yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's probably either I put so many articles and the, like there's there's so much to say about fracking. And but ultimately, maybe instead of researching all the fracking stuff, look into renewable, sustainable energy alternatives and go with those, because ultimately, the more time we spend on fossil fuels is a waste of time because it's it's not sustainable and it's damaging to the planet. We need to find a different thing or in seven years, we're all going to die. Um, and that's not really an option, in my opinion. And I think in Gabe's opinion, and <laughs> hopefully your opinion. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's my little that's my thing. Yeah. And I think like similar <laughs> to uh, like the complaints about like what it does to the environment which is like it like we kind of went into it in spore too is like how people just aren't acknowledging that other living things on this planet matter as much as us and that it yeah. is it's still a matter of danger it's still a matter of of concern when those things are at risk because we rely like we're, we cannot sustain ourselves without the natural world and so we need to take better care of it and sadly people just kind of separate themselves from it and that's why i think like when you're seeing like the protests that happen like for the no dapple right for, for yeah. the indigenous people speaking out against the pipelines because it was similar to this where it's like oh you know if it works it won't hurt anyone but we've seen what happens when there's an oil spill we're still yeah. cleaning those up. We've seen what happens when there's a nuclear spill. Still cleaning those up. And it's yeah, it sounds nice when you're like, okay, if everything goes well and no one has a bad day or slips up and there's not human error, uh, then we get something and people get money and there's jobs, right? Um, but it's <laughs> ignoring the fact that that one day can severely impact the natural world around it and ruin everyone's future in that yeah. area and yeah the same with like uh, uh rigging in like the ocean and stuff those are yeah. really scary because and then, like, that day even on a good day it's still hurting the animals it's still hurting the plants it's still hurting the water supplies it's just not the water supplies we drink from it's the water supplies literally every other creature on this planet has access to and we're just like all right it's fine for them yeah we don't care if your dog dies go to work <laughs> you know i don't know it's yeah. just <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's what we're really finding in this section is just, like, that people really need to care about the environment as if it were a person. Like, we need to put the same kind of value into it as we do the people around us. Um, and if that's, like, you know, envisioning the Earth as the Lorax or the hidden people or whatever you want to kind of put a face to it, let it yeah. be that. But like then do some action about it like do something yeah because yeah exactly and like we're running out of time so there's like is a sense of urgency and it shouldn't like ultimately the destruction of ecosystems should enrage us because mm -hmm. the lack of biodiversity will decrease the amount of plant life will decrease our levels of oxygen which will rise the sea level because that's where all the creatures are and they're doing better than we are um and then we're killing them too so it's like a whole other thing uh we reference the bay episode <laughs> dead zones and other fun yeah um it's like really it, like you know we go so much in our lives not paying attention or just not knowing about those things because um they're are people who benefit from us not knowing that and not yeah. being afraid. Um, and so hopefully you're listening to this and you're outraged about fracking, you're outraged about oil, about all the <laughs> different natural um, resources that are unnatural, right? And the fact that like, those are, we only get what we get. And then that's yeah. it. Then what? 
then what? Then what? Um, that's it. There's nothing. Exactly. And it shouldn't be what like green dreams or whatever. It's actually future to make it better. Um, yeah. Yeah. So don't watch this movie. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't good. Someone else make a better one. Like. I feel like it needs the story needs to be told or stop making movies and start doing something about it. <laughs> I feel like movies are really important as a way to motivate, but like also like those millions of dollars that go towards the movies, maybe make the world less gross with that money too. Yeah. Or use the money like... you made for the movie to make the world less gross. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And it was so goofy though, too, that I feel like it, like at the end it was like, kind of messy and goofy that I don't even think it did a good job of making people feel educated enough or sad enough yeah. to do anything about it. Um, and you definitely can't. Like, we talked about some really great eco-horror films that do a, a great job of making us feel bad about the environment and also being afraid. <laughs> right? um, yeah. Yeah. I like positioning you in a place where you're, like, questioning things instead of being like, yeah, okay, well, if you try hard, the planet will do what you want. It's not. It's not, it's not how it works. It's like maybe respect the planet and the planet will do things to protect the planet so that you don't die in seven years. That's that's more of the thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Check out our Ways to Help uh, yes. section to learn. Lots of stuff. Um, you Other can people check out were some saying stuff as well to see if you agree with those films are saying. Um, and if you have any information, if you're doing work um, out there, if you have any books, if you have like eco horror books, love them. Um, if you have just regular <laughs> like science uh, information about like what's happening, we love to learn. So be sure to shoot us an email at theghoulsnextdoor at gmail.com or just check out our website, theghoulsnextdoor.com. Tweet at us. You know, there's lots of options available yeah. for communicating. Or maybe we'll reach out to you if we find you. There's yeah. some people I saw, I was like, that'd be dope. We got them on the show. So there's also that. But yeah, if you're there and you're already watching us and you're like, hey, I didn't even know that was an option. I can send you articles. Please. Yeah, we'd love Do that. It. We'd read them. Um, yeah, send it, uh, so interact with us on social media because we, we really do like to, to learn. Like, that's the whole reason why, like, a part of me picked Eco Horror was because I was like, I know there's so much that we could be doing yeah. and learning and seeing um and then we can share it with you and if there's things that um you want to see coming up if there's certain topics that you feel like would really benefit our show or or a film or tv show that you're like you guys would tear that apart or like highlight yeah. some really cool things send it our way as well we love that um but yeah what we're almost mean? to the end of this eco horror yeah time we want to be um, sad but empowered yeah that's yeah. our whole thing. It's our whole thing, guys. <laughs> Edutainment. So <laughs> don't get married. I'll eat your kids. Or your kids will melt. <laughs> yeah. Or your kids just crumble in your hands. You're like like it just, why? just I was so weird. It was such a yeah, what it was a, a weird choice. It, the, what a decision. It, yeah. It was a whole weird decision. There were so many decisions where you're like Sex this could have been good, but it wasn't. <laughs> Remember when she she was ro- driving away to like escape, and yeah. there was like a road in front of her. Instead of going in the road, she was like, "I'm gonna go into the cornfield where I can't see." Yeah, <laughs> and, and then I'm like, gonna stay in that cornfield she forever. Left the road to do that, and I yeah. was like, "What are we doing?" I get stressed, but like corn? that's. But it was the road. I I can't. I get. Like, I know exactly forever. what you're saying. Uh, I'm oh, equally frustrated. Just, so many things happened in that film where I was like, "Why are you doing that?" Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, I feel like we would have researched to learn about this anyway. Yeah, but I guess the film I allowed us to fracking, talk about so. it. So, yeah. Yay. So thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. Uh, uh, you're welcome, film, <laughs> for yeah. doing the work for you. <laughs> Yeah. We did the research. We did the things that you should have been doing. And now people have that information. You're welcome. Yay. Tag team effort. <laughs> High five. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.